Okay, this is the third in the series of videos, what is a Newton, what is a Joule, and now today we're going to go over what is a Watt. And like I said, I have a series of three videos, you can link to the other two in the upper right hand corner of this video, what is a Joule, what is a Newton, what is a Watt, I think they all go together because as you know, Newton is unit for force, when you push or pull something, you apply force to it, when you do that, over or through some distance, through some distance, then you do work, and the joule is the unit for worker energy, and now we're going to talk in this video about power, and power is the rate at which workers work is done, power is the unit for the watt, and the watt is the rate at which worker work is done, or how fast you do work. So here we go. The watt is the derived unit for power in the metric system. We say derived unit because there's other units inside of there, like the joule and the second, which are kind of like some of those are kind of like base units. Okay, but the watt is the derived unit. We just know the watt is the unit for power in the metric system. And the watt really describes, you know, the rate at which work is done. When we talk about rate, we're usually talking about time, so we can just say how fast work is done. You do some work, I do the same amount of work, but I can do that work faster, and therefore I'm more powerful than you. And what a watt is, one watt is equal to one joule of work being done on an object per one second. Here's one joule of work per second. All right, and here is the unit, the watt, one watt. It's like a joule per second. So that's kind of the mathematical description. The other one was kind of we, we described it in our own words. But one watt is when we do one joule of work per second. And the abbreviation for the watt is obviously the W. You got to get B, don't get confused because the abbreviation for work is also W, but the watt is the abbreviation for the unit and the equation symbol watt is the unit for power and power is abbreviated with a P like that. So we could say that you have a light bulb or you are so powerful that you do 75 watts of work. That means you do 75 joules of work every second. Okay, and like that, 75 joules per second. And when we calculate power, we simply take the amount of work that we do. This is W for work. This is not W for watts. Watts is the abbreviation for the unit for power, but this is work divided by the amount of time it takes for us to do that work. That's where we calculate power. Work divided by time. Okay, and we have this guy, James Watt. To thank for this, this is 1736, and then he died in 1819, and he was doing a lot of work with the steam engine. This is the model somewhere of a steam engine, and he worked on the efficiency of a steam in, of the steam engine and improved the efficiency of the steam engine, and he did a lot of work on the steam engine in this time, which is 1781, which is in here when he was alive. All right, so that's the Watt, James Watt. He got the unit for the watt named after him. Now, the question is, how do you exert one watt of power? Okay, so the way you can do that, now I did talk about how you can exert one unit, newton of force and how you can do one joule of work in the previous videos, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video, but on this one, how do you exert one power, one watt of power? You would take a 100 or 102 gram object, which is 0 0.102 kilograms, and you would move that mass through a distance of one meter, and you would take one second to do that. So you take 100 grams, like take like a candy bar, two candy bars, 100 grams, lift them one meter, right? 100 grams is not that much. Lift that one meter through one meter and take one second to do that, then you would be exerting one watt of power. I just thought I had to do a video about horsepower because that's fascinating how horses power, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's how you exert one watt of power. Now you, we can show you how you do that. Now this is the equation for power, work divided by time. Now it's good to remember work is the force times the distance. So if you know the force times the distance, now we don't know the force here, but we do know the mass, and we can calculate the force if it's the force due to gravity as m, the mass of the object, times g, the acceleration due to gravity, times the distance, 
divided by the time. And we can do that right here. If we take 102 grams, we have to convert that into kilograms. So the kilogram is the base unit for mass in the metric system. The accelerating due to gravity, 9.81 meters a second, and the distance of one meter, we said. And then we're going to take one second to do that. And if you do all of that math and divide by one, you'll get that you would have exerted one watt of power. <clears throat> okay? Now, the, do a simple problem. The last one, we figured out how much work I would do when I did a pull-up. Now we're going to figure out how much power I would exert in watts when it takes me half a second to do that pull-up. So the question is, how do I do? How much do I do? I don't know what that means. How much power do I exert on my body? How much power do I? I left the word power out. How much power? Power should be right here. Do I do? That's not right. It should be how much power do I exert when I do one pull-up and it takes me half a second. Excuse my English here. So we'll assume it. I raise my body 60 centimeters and my body has a mass of 95 kilograms. That's what it usually is. And then I do a pull-up and it takes me half a second. I'm not even quite sure I can do a pull-up. I could probably do one, maybe two. But let's say it takes me half a second. So we're going to use this equation. This is the power. Now, we're not given the work. We are given the time. So we know power is work and the force times the distance. Now, we're not given the force. We're given the mass. We have to calculate the force. This m times g, when you're lifting something against gravity, this is the weight of the object or the force that it exerts times the distance divided by time. We just plug those numbers in. It's kind of like as we did in the previous slide, 95 kilograms. 9.81. Now we got to convert this into meters. This is 0 0.6 meters because it's 60 seconds. And I'm going to say it took me half a second to do that. So if I do all that stuff and divide by 0 0.5, I would get that I would exert about 1120 watts of power like that. Okay? That's when you do a pull-up. Okay, there you go. That's the third video in Newton, Joule, and Watt. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all the following things. Please. Helps me out a lot. I'm trying to get to 100,000. Subscribe to my channel for all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.